Are you on four square? No, what's that? Um, when you check into. I'm Kurt Kelly from the Pepper J Studios in Hollywood, California for Actors E Chad. And this morning we have someone who's appeared in film. She also sings and comes from a family background in entertainment. Welcome, Sandy Simmons. Good hey. Hey. So I just <laughs> found out as we were about to go live that you're about to do some opera. And I didn't yes. even know that the last time when I was trying to get you to sing yes. at the uh, American Film Market. And you were like, oh, I can't sing. Yes. Well, I've been training with uh, an amazing coach, Carlos D'Antonis, for the last two years. Right. And um, so I wrote a song. This is him. This is him, yes. So he's, um, he's an opera singer. He was born in Argentina, mm -hmm. and he was one of the first... Um, Hunchback of Notre Dame's. Uh, really? Yeah. So he's in, done it in twice. Film or on, on uh, stage? Live okay. in the opera. Yeah. Okay. And so um, he's he's amazing. So he's been out here for about three years, and he has all kinds of uh, celebrity people that he trains. And I was fortunate enough to get in with him, and he has been such an inspiration to me. Um, I wrote a song for my grandparents. Um, oh, nice. Who, yeah, they're amazing. They're like they're the pillars of my family okay and um, they were married for 75 years nice awesome longer than most people know each other yes and in love and best friends and you know they're God-fearing people and they really I, I just feel so fortunate to have them in my life because they really showed me what all these movies are about as far as love goes and and integrity as far you know and, and the best of human nature so um, they passed away. Um, it's been a, a year, a couple of years now. Right. Um, and so I wrote a song uh, to honor their legacy, and their legacy is love. So this is an epic song that I'm going to be singing in March um, with him. He uh, he liked the song so much that he said that he wanted to sing it with me. So we're going to sing my grandparents' song. Now this song. is the first um, time you're doing a formal performance of this song. Is this also your writing debut for music? Well, I... Wow, big side. Yeah, so it's a, it's a big deal because it's... Okay. It is going to be my first um, debut as a, a, a classically trained singer. And I'm very excited and honored um, to, to be part of uh, the event. Um, I did go on tour with my brother. So I have an older brother that is a rapper. And we wrote a song together uh, one summer. And he really liked it, so we made a music video, and he said, hey, I'm going on tour this summer, you want to come with me? So we went on tour, and we did like 41 states. Really? And it was what, so now much what fun. What is his name? His name is Saab. So he is awesome. I'm, I'll, I'll talk about my family all day. Yes. And um, this is him here? Yeah, so this is Saab. So this was Saab, Abstract, Rude, and I. So Saab is... Um, you would be the one on the left, I'm guessing. Uh, yeah, I'm the, okay. the one on the left without the facial hair. Yes that day. <laughs> so, no, but Saab's awesome. He's, um, he's a co-founder of Rhyme Sayers, and Rhyme Sayers is, one of, is actually the biggest underground hip-hop label. And um, so he's been doing hip-hop for, for many years, and now he's out here and he's a writer. And he writes with some of the top um, writers in L.A. So. You come from a musical family, it I seems. Do. I do. Now, were your grandparents? Yes, in my grandmother who I'm named after, D. Um, yeah, this is Rhyme Sayers. Uh, so if you go under artists, you can find my brother's page. Okay. Um, so he's always touring and, and still doing that, but now he's writing, um, he's writing different genres of music. That's all he does all day long. And then my grandmother was also a composer. She was a prodigy pianist. Really? She used to play. So classically trained. Classically trained. Well, she wasn't trained. She was a she was a prodigy, so she used to play Oh, self-taught. Yeah, self-taught. Nice. And she used to play in the silent film theaters. And she wrote a song for the state of Colorado, and they actually, they, 
they bought the song from her, so. How do you yeah. play in a silent film? Well, she would sit in the front. And I'm imagining all of this, okay, you know, so I wasn't as inquisitive as you okay, when I was okay. getting told the story, but um, so I, I imagine she would sit in the front and, you know, they'd watch it and she'd play she'd along. Play so it wasn't yeah. quite that silent because they got the enjoyment of exactly. her playing. Exactly. Playing. So um, do you have that same unique advantage that you can hear notes and, and yes. write and sing the pitch? Yes. So when I was a little girl, and actually the song that I wrote for my grandparents, I composed this song on the piano when I was probably about seven years old. Really? And I just, I, this I always, this one that you're going to be debuting. Song, yes. So I had this song in my heart for so long, and then I finally put words to it. So it's, it's going to be very emotional, and it's going to be, it's, it's, it's just really special now to me. Now, is this classic opera we're talking about, or is it more a rock pop opera? What type of operatic <sighs> music is this? It's it's classic. Well, my my song is actually um, it has, I have a very wide range. Right. Um, so so are you, you go all the way to like mezzo soprano, or what's your range? Yes. Yes. Alto to soprano, four octaves, five. Five octaves. Really? Yeah. So I can go really low. When I get low, it's more of a. It's more of a soulful sound, what but then when I sound like? <laughs> uh -huh. I knew you're gonna uh -huh. do this to me. Yeah. I can't. I can't today. I really can't. Cause you know what? My vocal coach said to me. He said, "Always Don't wear heels." Today. Yes. Always wear heels. And never sing unless you're ready. Always wear heels. Always wear heels. Does that make you hit you the higher these? notes or something? I got these for my wow, birthday. Do you like those? Those are some serious heels. Aren't these amazing? Dang. I love my boyfriend. Nice. So the heels help you hit those high notes better. Well, he said, you know, you're, he's he's really like training me in like image, right? You know, because I'm you met me. Absolutely. <laughs> so he, you know, he's been really on me lately. He's like, you gotta, you know, you have to wear the hills and be confident and always, you know, come out and look like a star, and and know that that's part of your artistic expression. In fact, here is our first encounter together. And that. Was, yeah. <laughs> yes, that was a moment to remember. He would be remember. ashamed of me. Oh, really? No, yeah. I thought you were classic when we when we did Aww. that interview with the American Film Market. Yeah. Um, and and you were fun. speaking out on behalf of the Black Jaguar Foundation for the first time. Yes, we you know we were a good team. Absolutely. I think we need to we need to talk about that. So something I do want to talk about is this. Yes, you Tell have. Tell me about. I happened to pull out my phone, and you're like, I did the commercials <laughs> for that, and nearly 10 million people have viewed it for the Samsung Note. Yes, yeah. So How did you land that job? You know, I just, I, I had my agency, they called me, and they sent me right. on this, you know, audition, and it was really top secret when I went in. They were just calling it Project H. And Project H. Project H. Uh -huh. So I had no idea what I was doing. Um, you know, they just had me kind of wave and act like I was you know, sh looking on some sort of a device and waving to my friends. So I, you know, I, I did that and, you know, I felt really good about it. And they called me the, the next day and they said, we want you to be part of this commercial. Didn't tell me anything else. You'll have to sign this non-disclosure. Yeah. So it was very confidential. And even, you know, day of, they would set us up and they, then they gave us the phone. Yes. And then as soon as we were done doing our scene, they take it away. So and you like, weren't even allowed to play with it on the we set. We weren't allowed to play with it. They it was they was very very confidential. Like you know, they were very serious about not letting people know what it was all about. And I can kind of understand. It's very cool. And apparently, you know, some of these technology ideas get leaked. And absolutely, yeah, you know, that can be a difference of hundreds of millions of dollars. Or well, and especially when they have unique technology like Samsung has been so competitive with Apple. I, I believe last report I heard they were out selling Apple three to one or something with their devices right now. Yeah. So it's, it is an extremely competitive market. Now, from the time you shoot something like this till it airs, how do you keep quiet about it? I don't. Okay. <laughs> she didn't really I talk say about that. It. Yeah. No, I mean, I, like, I don't tell everybody. I usually, and that's the thing, like, I've, I'm not one because I'm so, I've been doing this for about three years seriously. And so. Doing commercials three years? Acting, so the commercials, the right. acting, and really pursuing this, this career um, full force. That's cool. That's yeah, the Samsung. Yeah, that's, that's a Samsung talking. I like that. Yeah, see, it lets you know when people are tweeting you about uh -huh. you. I'll take your, your phone. Right? No, you cannot have my phone, <laughs> darling. <laughs> so, um. So yeah, so it's, you know, with um, everything that I do, I kind of 
I put it on Facebook, you know, when I can. Is this you from the Samsung commercial or a different commercial? This is another commercial. So this was one of my, my first big commercials, big pain. It was cool. They flew us out to Detroit to shoot the five-hour energy commercial. Really? Yeah. Energy as in a drink? Five-hour energy drink, yes. And it was so funny because, like, I met one of my best friends on the trip. So they flew us out there, and I, I loved my, the girl that I was working with, and we stayed there for, like, it was, like, three days. I nice. just had a beautiful time. I mean, there's some really cool stuff in Detroit. If what you part haven't did been. you stay? I stayed in, um, oh, why am I forgetting the name of it now? But it was... Um, uh, Farmington Hills. Not there. Farmington Hills. South Hill. It was very beautiful, and it was like Birming, Birmingham. 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 Okay. Oh, and it was so ago. cool because um, they had one of the, uh, the guys that was running for president, the one that lost... What's his name? There were a few of them, yes. He was there that day. Um, they were filming him at the, at the theater, and the guy that was driving us around was driving around the CNN reporter that was reporting on him. Really? And he had all of his notes. Of what the president... The reporter left the notes of what he was going to ask the, the guy that was running. And so we were reading all the notes, and it was really interesting to like see, you know, before he even asked him the questions, what the questions were going to be. So it was a nice. lot of fun. Nice. We'll be back with more questions in a moment. I'm Kirk Kelly on Actors Eat Chat. The great thing about NL Media is it's a one-stop shop. We are soup to nuts. We have writers, directors, producers, animators, motion graphics artists, editors, videographers, musicians, all under one roof. And we are a boutique creative house where we actually do the creative at much more affordable price and have the staff in-house to execute it professionally. My name is John Palacio. My name is Luis Fontes. My name is Paul Robinson. I am Jesse Cervantes. I'm Curtis Peel. My name is Ben Joran. One of the most common questions we have from potential clients is how does it work? What happens when you engage in now media to create a video, a marketing campaign? It first starts with, you know, obviously having the phone conversation with the client, brainstorm with them to come up with a really good concept and a really good idea to push whatever they're trying to do to the next level. Only with that in mind can we really try to tailor a concept and a script for their exact audience that fits in with their branding and the message they want to tell. I will storyboard it out, get a real rough idea uh, of what we want to do. We'll then present the client with a couple of options, the different ways that we could go with some of the things that we've come up with. And they'll say, this is good, and then we'll come back and we'll start animating that or designing it or editing it. Our clients are generally, you know, like to be really hands-on, and we'd like to hear from you kind of all along the board. There's no surprises. What we like to do with every partner is we actually create a page on the NNOW website. So they can give feedback, and that way, when the time we get to the final product, you know, usually there's not a whole lot more revisions to do because they, we've already been working together the whole time. The big difference is that, that real personal creative touch. We have a creative group that can execute that vision, whether it's animation, video, motion, graphics, and do so with some unique creative that is custom tailored to that business. You know, dream it up. It's video. It's magic. It can happen. Kurt Kelly, welcome back to Actors Eat Chat. Don't forget to go to our sister station, Actors Reporter, and go on the uh, Actors Discount link, and you'll find the people who have been bringing you the show over the last five years. And when you go to their site, click in Actors Reporter as a discount code and get special discounts and incentives for people who have been helping to support the over 1,000 guests and 5 million viewers who have been on Actors Eat Chat, like Sandy today. Now, you said you just started <clears throat> taking acting seriously a few years ago. So before yes. you got serious, mm -hmm. what were you doing? Hmm. Well, I had many odd jobs. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I went, to, I went to school at Arizona State University, and I studied film production and nonprofit management. Nonprofit management. That's nonprofit management, yes. And so, Collage of studies. You know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a life designer 
So I only, I, you know, I try to do the things that really make me feel alive and good. What is a life designer? Is that someone who tells people, here's how you're supposed to live? Well, I was a life coach at one point. Okay. <laughs> but we were, we were not um, taught to tell people how to live. We were just taught to, to listen and, and ask, um, ask questions that they maybe weren't asking themselves. Um, and to help hold a people, you know, accountable. But a life designer is basically, um, I just, I try to make decisions in my life that are going to bring me the most fulfillment and the most joy in life. So, so these are things for you specifically, not necessarily consulting someone else. Right. So I did, you know, I, for, I went to, you know, I went to school for, um, um, film and nonprofit management, and the idea was I wanted to produce um, things that would inspire people. And um, you know, I did a couple projects, and then I, I got to a place where I randomly got invited to a Tony Robbins convention. Nice. And I had no idea what it was. I'd never heard of life coaching, and they, but some people knew that I was an ins you know I loved inspiring people, and and I wanted to create a positive show, and so. Um, my friend invited me and I saw this guy changing people's lives before my eyes, like literally changing and this people's is lives. Tony. Uh, I loved I loved watching him work with people and help them to get past roadblocks and it was just something I, as soon as I saw him doing it, I'm like, I have to learn how to do this. And I knew I would get back to media, um, but I knew that that was a life skill that I needed for myself, for my friends, for my family, and you know, I just needed to know how to do what he was doing to help people. So I did that for a period of time at a, a naturopathic um, drug rehab in Arizona, and that was a wonderful part of my life, but I got to a point where I was like, okay, I'm always expanding, I always want to do more, I always want to reach more people, so right. I, I went back to media, and media is really a place where I feel like I can inspire the most people you know, through through the media platforms that we have today that we're so lucky to have. So, um, so yeah, so I always felt that I would be on the production side, and I love that because I'm a, you know, I love the thrill of the stress of having to get things done and, and you know, Deadlines. having to work with people and, and, and make miracles happen on a dime. Yes. And uh, so it, that was exciting for me. But I always, I did have an entertainer inside of me. Ever since I was a little girl, I was always, you know, writing songs, performing. If there was a class project and I had to do something, I always turned it into a performance. I always turned every graduation or anniversary, it was like, oh, I'm going to entertain the family. So it was always there, but growing up in places like rural Texas and Arizona and, you know, very conservative places where you didn't see a lot of the industry. You didn't see a lot of black people very successful in the places where I was, and especially not in the industry. Um, it didn't seem like a viable path for me, but when I moved out to here to LA, I was like, I got some opportunities to do some things, and I, I, just, I just opened myself to it. I surrendered to the opportunities that came to me, and they just keep coming, so I've been very fortunate. No, you said Texas. What part of Texas are you from? Um, so I, I grew up in, uh, well, the f earliest part of my life I was in Corpus Christi. Right. So down south. Way down there. Way down in south. The <laughs> in the handle area. In the handle area. And then I went up north, and I was in um, Amarillo and, and Lubbock, Texas. So you did the big city tour in Texas, didn't you? Uh, <laughs> hardly. All the smaller ones. So how did you... Um, separate yourself from that regional accent because that that area does have a very distinct sound yes i am really good with accents i when i moved um away from texas people would make fun of me for you know saying y'all and things like that and so i just picked up right away i was like well how do you guys talk and i just started talking like them but i've always been fascinated with language and and, and accents so it was easy for me. Now, your dad also, you talked about your grandmother being um, self-taught on piano uh, yeah. as a prodigy, but your dad yes. also was performing. Yes. So my dad, and I have a very colorful background. <laughs> so, also. Um, so I had two dads, three dads, Hold really. On. One more time? So I, had, I was adopted. 
Okay. And so my adopted father who raised me was an amazing singer. Um, he often led singing at church. What and was his name? Roy. What is his name? Roy, Roy Simmons, yes. Okay. And God bless his soul. He's not with us um, here on the earth any longer, but he was an amazing singer. So there was always music in our family. Right. And then I was so fortunate to meet my biological father, and he has always been a musician. He still has a band. Really? Yes. So music was just in your genealogy from the beginning. Yes. Okay. And I have, a, I have a cool story about my dad I want to share really quickly. Yes. Um, we found out that there was, a, there was a famous musician, DJ Shadow, that used one of his songs in, his, in one of his albums. Not to be mistaken with Shadow Stevens. No. Okay. And we were able to get him compensated for all those records that were sold with his song on there. Oh, how nice. Yeah, so if you want to check out my dad's music, um, his, his, his 45. Now is this about? Yes, so you can get a couple of his songs. Where so do you find the story here? So this is, um, this is uh, on Omnibus Records. Okay. I think it's like Omnibus.com, OmnibusRecords.com. They sold, they basically found my father. They were finding obscure artists from his time because my dad was a big deal in his day. Um, and Which was what era? Was like it was like the sixties. Okay. Um, soul music. Soul music, funk and soul. Nice. And what happened was one of the the guys in his band got shot, oh. and so he just he just turned to God and he you know did the band thing on the side and he still does it and he makes amazing beautiful music and I want him to move out here <laughs> <laughs> and work with Saab, but nice. um, he's just he's just brilliant. But um, so. You can go to omnibus.com and check out some of his music. Three Days Ahead is his band. And um, if I have anything to do with it, there'll be more music coming from him and soon. And his name is? Buddy Davidson. Buddy Davidson. Or Bill okay. Davidson. Okay. Yeah. Buddy Bill. Buddy Bill. <laughs> now, you're also involved in a lot of philanthropic efforts. Yes. Tell us about your green. Um, so, I ha I, I'm very passionate about... Um, Everything you do, I... I just have to say, it's really fun talking about myself. <laughs> <laughs> now that we're done talking about me, you know, more about me. This is great. You know, I was like, this is, I kept thinking this was going to be really weird, but yeah. I'm doing very well. You're fabulous. <laughs> so, um, yeah, philanthropic stuff. Yes. Um, so, this, I, as I said, I studied nonprofit management, so philanthropy is a big part of my life. Which is actually a course offered at ASU? It's a course offered at ASU. So Very I could cool. get like a bachelor's in nonprofit? Yes. Really? Yes. And, and so this is the LA Green Grounds? Yes. So a couple days ago um, I went out, I have a radio show, um, and I went out to work with them because I wanted to highlight them on my show. So and what is the radio show just so we can tune in? My radio show is called The Sandy Simmons Show. And That's uniquely named. Yes, yeah. I put a lot of thought into that. Okay. And uh, it's on Sunaker FM, which we're in the process of getting our FM status. It takes several months, but we're, you can find us what online. Do you mean you're in the process of getting FM status. Are you applying for a broadcast license for yes. Sunaker FM? Yes. And so we have an office and we have the, this is you on the all air the equipment. Air. Right. So we're just, we, we submitted the application, so we should be hearing back from them in probably about four or five months. Congratulations. Thank you. Do you have a, a, a a uh, assigned frequency in mind that people will be able to listen to it on? You know what, we do, but it's not something that I can recall right okay. now. Okay. So uh, you also have a Facebook page for... Yes. So you're streaming this live on the internet and then we'll broadcast to terrestrial here in Los right. Angeles area? Yes, and you can and you can also go, and there's an app that we have. Um, if you go to the website, you'll, you'll see the information for the app. Um, so that you can download it on your smartphone, your Samsung. I see. Yeah, so you can and listen to it. And hopefully on your Apple too. So you decided to go cover this LA Green. Yes, because. Um, and you became involved in them to help them out beyond covering them. Though? Yes, absolutely. So is my. Is this you speaking out on their behalf? This is me speaking out on their behalf. So oh. here we're at um, Crenshaw High School in oh. South Central. Awesome! Pepper, Pepper used, used to, to teach, teach there. there. That's so cool. I love teachers. And for all their class watching right now, um, yeah. And so th is this fellow workers who are volunteering to help? So this is Jake, and he's actually part of their social media, mm -hmm. um, and he volunteers doing that. But what they were doing this day is they've built um, a an edible garden on the grounds. So and this is to teach students 
how to start to grow their own organic stuff and not be buying so much yes. garbage in stores, if you will? Right. So there's many, many, many um, implications to growing your own food. There's many benefits to Absolutely. growing your own food. So the kids are getting to experience that hands-on through LA Green Grounds, and they also go and they help people build gardens in their front yards. Well, as well. Isn't there, are these the same group that started in Crenshaw area where they actually took areas of, of yes, street Ron property? Yes, Ron Finley. Ron Finley, that's yes. right. And they started tearing up the property, um, uh, the grass, and putting in gardens. Yes, and which is so cool. And at first people were really upset about it, and then they saw stuff like this. So that's my personal garden. Really? Yes. Oh, we're going to have to compare gardens. <laughs> I, I have a garden at my house also. Oh. I have a drip system. I, oh. I, you're advanced. Well, thank you. Yes, and it's a time drip system, I might add. So I can serve water and water my plants at the same time. Nice. Um, but I, I grew up um, growing stuff and have continued that because of the value of eating fresh food. It makes your skin glow like yours. Yes, like yes. ours. Yes. Ching. <laughs> so you also help out with AIDS. Um, yes. So uh, one of the other things I did with my, um, I've been, I've been, attending a synagogue, um, Kol Ami, and one of the things that they did for Thanksgiving and that they do every year is they go and they work with the Gay and Lesbian Elderly Center. Really? I didn't even know that there was such a thing. But gay and Lesbian Elderly Center? Yes. Okay. Like it's specifically for gays and lesbians that are elderly. And I've always worked with the elderly and I love the elderly. I have a thing for the elderly. I just lo I love old people. Right. But um, this was such a cool experience because, you know, I'm working with, uh, uh, that day, you know, we, uh, we went, my sister and I, we volunteered before we spent the day with our family. And um, it was just so cool to, to be with these people and to, to, to consider their experience and, and growing up and, you know, experiencing being gay and lesbian in a time when it was so much harder for them. So my heart just really went out to them um, and it was an amazing experience. We sang a little song, which you can uh, see the uh, link to, I'm sure, on the website. On the Gay and Lesbian Center website. We made, yeah, we made a Turkey Day song. Okay. We'll be back with more in a few moments on Actors E Chat. I'm Kurt Kelly. Over her long career, Nina Fosh appeared in classic films such as Spartacus, The Ten Commandments, and An American in Paris. She received an Academy Award nomination for her performance in Robert Wise's Executive Suite. In 1965, Nina Fosh arrived here at USC to begin teaching directing, and I was lucky enough to get into one of her first classes. Even as she continued acting in film and television, Nina's passion for teaching lasted for over 40 years. Her course was immensely popular because she developed her own unique style, drawing on her experiences studying with Lee Strasberg, Stella Adler, and Uta Hagen, and being directed by such icons as Vincent Minnelli, Stanley Kubrick, Cecil B. DeMille, and Otto Preminger. As I began directing, the tremendous value of her teachings became evident and how important it was to preserve them for future generations. We became close friends, and at a cinema department event, we ran into my former classmate, George Lucas, who invited us up to Skywalker Ranch, where we discussed creating a DVD of her course. He agreed to finance it, and on January 10th, 2002, we began taping an entire semester using a crew of USC film students. We filmed for eight hours a week for 15 weeks, and this is the result. Okay, so what are we gonna do this semester? Live from Hollywood, I'm Kurt Kelly, and you're watching Actors eChat. Make sure you go to the Actors Reporter website and click on the Actors Discount link. That'll show you the people who have been bringing you this show for the last five years, some of the sponsors, as well as over 1,000 guests. And if you click on their site and put in the Actors Reporter discount code, you'll get special incentives for also visiting their sites and letting them know how you found out about them. And how we found out about Sandy was <laughs> at the American Film Market, where you were there pitching your... Why are you chuckling? Because it was so much fun. It was. It was, it was hysterical. So much fun. Um, and, and if you haven't seen it yet, make sure that uh, you go check it out on the Actors Reporter yeah. site. Just type in Sandy's name and you'll find um, the interview we did there. Um, you had just started your acting career three years ago, five years ago? Three years ago. What was the turning point that made you say, okay, now it's time? Um, well, 
just moving out here really being being in a, a, a city where I actually believed in the, that it could be a possibility mm -hmm. um, and you know then just I had someone approach me my first acting job out here was I did a Ford commercial really? with Boris Kajo really? yeah so they approached me I was at the I was at the Starbucks and the girl walks up to me and she's like would you like to be in a commercial you know we just ask you some questions about your car I was like sure called me back a couple days later said come in again it was one of those confidential now, did things did you initially think oh this is a joke or a scam or something it was just kind of like sure i don't you know i'm op i'm pretty open to new experiences and no. so <laughs> yes yes, <laughs> yes. yes. <Okay. laughs> so yeah so it was just one of those things and and it ended up being you know they were unveiling the new Fusion car, right. which is their electric car, which is really cool. So very you cool. started the international ad right out started of the box? Started an international ad right out of the box. Somebody asked me to do it and co-starred with Boris Kajo, who's the ho nice. hottest black actor out there. I mean, amazing, gorgeous man. Okay? How do you really feel about this? Gorgeous. Yes, I see. I see. So, but no disrespect to his beautiful wife. Right. Um, or, or your delightful boyfriend. Well, no. he can handle no. it. Details. Details. <laughs> yeah. So, how many commercials have you done in this meteoric? Oh, here he is. I've done. Oh, there he is. Yeah. I mean, can you imagine showing up, and him and I just hit it off. We hammed it up. We did a whole improv thing. The directors were like, "Oh, you guys are great together." Blah blah blah, and it was so much fun. And then I got all these checks in the mail, and I was like, "I need to look into this." <laughs> this, this is some serious business. <laughs> this that was easy. Yeah. You know, so uh, so I did, and I've done 16 commercials. Really? I've done 16. My last commercial was a McDonald's commercial, which I did a couple months ago. So most of the commercials you're doing are national commercials also. Yeah, I just keep booking them. Nice. Who's your agent? Aqua. Thank you, guys. I love you. Your Christmas cards are coming. <laughs> they got tied up in the mail. Now, is this, which commercial is this? So this is the McDonald's one I just did. Right. Um... So this is this new jalapeno kicker sandwich. Nice. That was that little flash there was me. Really? Oh. Yeah. So it's you know and I thought this was really fun and creative. It's the first time McDonald's has kind of taken this kind of creative spin to it. So I thought they did the director right. did a good job, and it was a female director, which I think is really cool. Nice. So um, aside from commercials, have you done modeling or? Yes. Has it been more strictly on camera acting? Um, so I've done some, I, I, I did some modeling when I was younger. Um, I was with Ford uh, Modeling Agency. Great agency. It was a very good agency. Um, and then out here, they, I do a little, I do some print. So mm -hmm. I've done some, every once in a while I get the random print job. But I'm really focused on film and television. Is this from a print shop? This is just a headshot. Okay. Yeah. But they could print it if they wanted to. Yeah, and that's my friend Tyrone. Um, Tyrone Robinson, he does a natural woman photography and he um, shoots women and they're just the way they are and shows women how beautiful just the way they are. So I love you. Thank you. So without makeup or? Yeah, just, you know, just be, if you like to wear a lot of makeup, you can do that. But just really showing women just their beauty, just, you know, being who they are and, and not, you know, trying to fit them into this or that. And it's just... His message is, he says it better, but I, I understand the essence of it, and, and he's helped a lot of girls to really um, get more confident with themselves. Self-realizations. Yeah. You seem to be really big on, on uh, now who is this? So this was a fun commercial I did with Badoo. And it, we had a giant slip and slide, and we slipped and slide, slided for 12 hours to do this commercial. Ow. Yeah. It was fun, though. But after like, 12 yeah. hours of this? 12 hours back and forth, and we had to do tricks, and we had to, like, grab each other and, like, try to spin. Oh, There's this me. looks like it could be an absolute <laughs> riot. It was so much fun, and the whole group was just sweethearts. And what it was the purpose of this? <laughs> just to purpose? promote slip sliding away? This is like an international, like, dating. It's like a dating. What? Yeah. So, like, you... I don't know. We were sliding into this relationship. Yeah. Actually, Seriously. that was kind of the way it was. Oh, know. my gosh. <laughs> nice. Now, you also uh, have done, tell, uh, now, what is this? Um, so, this was a commercial for the NFL. Okay. And uh, this, uh, my girlfriend's company actually owns this um, hoax entertainment. And so, they do a lot of uh, editing video effects and stuff like that. And so, they did a whole bunch of um, commercials and this was for the NFL 
It was really cute, it was funny, got a lot of dialogue, which was nice. But I love comedy. Ugh. Improv? I've, so I just took an improv, my first improv class at the um, Upright Citizens Brigade. Okay. Love, I'm hooked. And who is your instructor there? Josh Smith. And why are you so hooked? It is brilliant. I mean, it, I, uh, you just. So this is the Upright Citizens Brigade. Yes. And it helps you get out of yourself? It, what it does. On Franklin. Yes, so it's really, really close to us. Um, there's so many wonderful elements to it. So number one, it's a collaborative, what I love about it, it's a collaborative experience. The more connected you are with the people that you are, that you're playing the game with, right. the better, the more funny it is. So and this is completely non-scripted? Totally completely non-scripted. In front of an audience or just in a class? Yeah, in front of an audience. So we really? did stuff in front of, uh, of an audience and it went really good. It was really fun. But like there's rules, so there's structure, but then there's so much freedom. Well, when you say rules, what kind of rules are in improv? Um, so there's there's quite a few rules actually, and, and um, but so one of the things always say yes. Always say yes. <laughs> That's Rule right. number one. Which is a cool thing like to do in life too. Like when you're just in a normal conversation with people, if you're like shutting down the conversation by being you know the 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 guy that like doesn't want to just you know, have a good time. Yeah, the, what do you call it, the negative Nancy? Well, it, it, there's a lot of studies that show people are naturally inclined to say no, that y you actually yeah. have to think of ways to ask the questions correctly and how to get the yes. Yes. And that's what makes yes. good salespeople or people who are successful in business is they've learned the art of getting the yes. Yes. Really? Yes. <laughs> so, so this improv situation, has that helped your acting skills for tremendously. on camera performances? Um, yes. So, <laughs> the yes, film please. that I'm doing, yes. Okay. So, the film that I'm doing right now, I actually um, co-wrote with a couple of guys, and it's loosely scripted improv film. Oh, nice. Yeah. When and do we start shooting? So, we're shooting now. Okay. Um, we're going to be wrapped here in a couple of weeks, and um, it's going brilliantly. There's something so magical about improv. There's, it really connects you to just the magic uh, of the moment and how interconnected we are and how there's just, I, it's, it's, so, it's so hard to explain, but there's, I just love being connected with people in an improv space and, cr and co-creating because it makes, it makes me feel like there's a deeper meaning to life because there's, there's things that, that happen magically that just can't happen when you plan it out. It, it, it could never happen as, as well or as perfectly or as in sync um, if you planned it out. It's just a really So you have a sense thing. of authorship, if you will, versus being a spectator. Is this a scene from the shoot? So this, this, this is actually the song that my brother and I wrote oh, together. Oh, okay. And uh, this is our first little song. And it's all about, um, you know, shining and being a bright light and not... Um, you know, being dimmed by people or circumstances. Being able to come out of yourself in spite of all obstacles. Right. So my, my, my focus was, you know, thinking about the kids in Africa that are, you know, being enslaved and, you know, forced right. to be prisoners. Like, just kind of singing to them to just, you know, like, walk away from, you know, the, the pain or the, um, just the torture of that and experience and shine, you know, shine through that. And, it, and oh, they do. We have a question from one of our actors, Eve Chatters, Pepper. Yeah, so one of the chatters wanted to know, so you mentioned opera. What l language do you sing in when you sing opera? Well, this is my second year in, so I'm still in English. Nice. Yes. Um, my, my coach can sing in seven different languages. Um, and so if it's something that you're interested in, I would check out Carlos D'Antonis. Um, he has a website, so it's just, I think it's just carlosdantonis.com. Mm -hmm. um, brilliant. He's a brilliant instructor. Um, so he can teach you in all of these different languages, and um, he can see into your soul. Now, do you speak other languages? I, I speak Spanish. Okay. That would be another language. Yes. <laughs> so in your Rebonics. acting, um, mm -hmm. you started with television or film first? Um, so funny enough, I was a producer in, um, in Arizona uh, with film. Right. This is a, a fun thing that we did. What was this? 
Uh, this was not in Arizona. This was actually here. It was um, a, a, a models versus zombies film. I see. But I was the What's heroine. The name of this? I talked my models versus zombies. That was the name. Yeah. Okay. Very simple. And you you were the heroine with the chainsaw. Yeah. So I talked myself into being the heroine because. Uh, I guess there was a there was a movie and I'm, I hate that I can't remember the name of the movie. I hate it when I forget things, when I need to remember them. But there was a movie uh, I think it was in the 70s where it was a black actor that was a heroine. It was the first time that there was a black actor. Do you know which one I'm talking about? No, I actually forgot it too. Yeah, so it was a also. <laughs> so it was a zombie film, but it was like one of the first times where the black actor was a heroine, but it had nothing to do with being black. Okay. So I was like, well, hey, I'm black, and I'm the only black model, so can I be the one to kill all the zombies? And I got, nice. the, I got that part, so it was fun. It was a lot of fun, walking around in my underwear. And this is from what film? So this is actually, was an epic day. This was a, this was a photo shoot that I did for Stance Socks, okay. awesome sock company, partially owned by Jay-Z and Will Smith. So it's just socks, but I love socks. So okay. I was very happy to be, I'm not wearing any today. Yeah, I noticed. Um, but uh, I do have the sexy heels. You want to see these again? Yes, please. Yes. Don't you? And, and, the, and the nice. And they and it's ankle just it's got bracelet. things on it. And yeah. It's pretty. It, absolutely. <laughs> so yeah, that was a photo shoot. But I love motorcycles, and we rode through the canyons that day. What is Wizard Dream? So Wizard Dream, I was actually in with Malcolm McDowell. With Malcolm McDowell, of course. Mwah, love you, Malcolm. Um, but also with one of your hosts here. Really. Um, British? British Shaw. British Shaw. Shaw. I always say oh, his name British. wrong. I'm sorry. British. And, and we had a, this is him there, uh, and we had a scene together. Are you loaded here? I'm loaded. I see that. So I'm the detective that, um, first I'm trying to like take down the bad guy, but British is when I get, I get possessed and I go into the detective office and I'm trying to get information out of him to find out where this girl is that I'm trying to kill because I'm possessed now. Right. And so we have this really great little scene where I'm just totally annoyed with him because they're so they're so incompetent and they can't get me the information I need fast enough. And it was just great. He was he was a really good actor. These are scenes from the film? Yes. So this is the trailer. I see. And there's British. There he there is. There he is. British. <laughs> so um, you see oh and we Kayla. Know her, Kayla. Yeah. Kayla Teglish. Um, who you, you're doing another film with, aren't you? Yes. So. Which film is that? So we're doing a film right now called um, Zero Day. Okay. And um, so we're, that's going to be probably, we're hoping to have it fully financed by the end of the year. So we were um, That was at the, the one you were at American Film Market yes. promoting and talking about. And I'm also going to be writing a couple films for with their- With Kayla? Well, for Kayla. Okay. So for Kayla, myself, and some other actors that we're collaborating with, and I would encourage all actors to collaborate. Um, I'm taking a, a screen. I've, I've actually did make my own movie when I was in um, film school, but I'm entering into the screenwriting again, and I'm going to be writing uh, for Kayla and a couple other actors and just creating our own stuff. So that's going to be really exciting. So I hope to be able to come back on when we get that finished. Now tell me about the reunion. Um, so Cleaver Family Reunion was awesome. So How it was my so? first theatrically released film, and I worked with an amazing cast of people. Super funny, super nice. It was a loving, warm family uh, film, and um, just really funny. And uh, there's H. M. Coakley. So he was the the director of that film. So he wrote it, and he directed it, and um, he's he's been doing a lot of good stuff. And that's that's the producer. Um, that was at the the premiere, yeah, David Lett, and uh, so that was a we had a big premiere, and we had like 300 people show up, and I got to put on a fancy dress, and nice. my weave. And who are these people from the film? So these are the girls that um, were in the film with me. So uh, this is one of those times where I'm forgetting names. That's okay. I'm it happens sorry. with age. And this is also a shot from the film. Yes. Okay. Yes. And this another, is another another. Co-actor. Co these are all the co-actors. So these are like some of the scenes from being on the set of shooting the Cleaver family. Yes, and I, l I love you guys, and don't be mad at me. It's I. It's a problem I have. That's all right. I I'm trying so hard. Trey what Island. Is this? This Trey is Trey Island. Island. Yes. Yeah, so he. So in the film, it was 
he was my husband, um, and he was a Beverly Hills lawyer, and I was his Beverly Hills wife, a psychiatrist, and we had been married for four years, and he didn't tell me that he had this big family in Texas. But I find out when his sister calls up and is like, we want to see Tinkle. And I'm like, <laughs> who's Tinkle? And so we had to you know, go out to Texas and meet his family, because I was like, um. How ironic that they were in Texas. Yeah, it what was part? funny. Uh, you know, we didn't establish okay. that. Yeah. Probably where you grew up. Yeah. And here's so, Tamara Goodwin. Tamara Goodwin. And she is a dear heart and such a good actress. And um, so, yeah, she was the sister. And it was fun. We had a good time. So you've done zombie films, detecti detective films, comedy. What other types of genres do you like to gravitate towards in your acting experience? Well, I've had a lot of life experience and a lot of, you know, heavy stuff and, and, and wonderful things have happened to me and so I gravitate towards drama but when I do comedy I re I'm reminded of my of my youth and I used to love to make people laugh and I was always a class clown getting kicked out of class and I just love to see people happy so it's kind of like even though I think that I'm right now in my life the drama is where I'm, I'm strongest the comedy is where I, I want to end up because how awesome is it to just have a job where you show up and you act goofy with people and you make people laugh. I think that would be wonderful. And art imitating life instead of the other way around. You're watching Actors Eat Chat. I'm Kurt Kelly. We'll be back with Sandy and more in a moment. Hey everyone, I am Judith Jones. If you are looking for photographs, which a lot of you are, let's face it, we need photographs every day, actors, models, even if you're just, you know, the milkman. You need photographs, okay? You need to look good. And if you wanna look good, you've only got one man to go to, and that's John Michael Ferrari. You see, I needed to look, I needed to look good. So I went to John, and he basically took me to the most beautiful place in LA and took these wonderful photographs of me and I really didn't even recognize myself because I just looked, well, let's just face it, I looked stunning. So if you wanna look stunning like myself in those photographs, uh, go to him, he will make you look beautiful. If you're pretty, he'll make you look prettier. If you're not pretty, he'll make you look pretty. John Michael Ferrari. That's all you need to know. So go to imagesbyferrari.com. That's the website, imagesbyferrari.com. And you can check out all his photography and you can contact him there. You can look at a picture of me. He directed me, because if you need direction, which, hello, I do, uh, he directs you too. So go and check that out, imagesbyferrari.com. You'll love it, you'll look great. Check it out, bye everyone. Live from Hollywood, I'm Kurt Kelly on Actors eChat. Don't forget to go to the Actors Reporter site and click on the Actors Discounts. And there you'll find the people who have been supporting the show for the last five years and have been part of bringing over 1,000 lovely guests like Sandra, who's here today. When you go to the site, click on the uh, Actors Discount code. Make sure you key that in, and it'll give you special prices for visiting their site. So you've done philanthropic work. You've done charity work. You've learned how to be a life coach. You're writing, directing, producing, doing radio, modeling. What have we missed? <laughs> have you missed, if anything at all? You're running for president soon. Uh, no. no. Okay. Um, yeah, so. Your radio show. My radio show. So I just, I just started this uh, radio show, which I'm extremely passionate about. Um, so it's on Sunaker FM, which is the first African radio station in LA. Now is this part of the the staff or are these guests you had on your show? Who are so, these people? So Job, so the, the taller gentleman on is, the left. is Job um, Nadwar mm -hmm. and he is one of my best friends. We went to college together. Oh, how nice. He moved out here from Senegal and he's been doing this that's radio him. show. That's him. And the gentleman with the glasses? Um, so that was my, my very first guest. Um, his name is Say, mm -hmm. S-E-Y. And he is an actor, musician, and he was an he was a rebel in um, the, the 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 era of um, Holly Selassie um, and out of Ethiopia, the Ethiopian okay, emperor. Okay, I was like, uh, I don't remember that period well. Okay. Yeah, so he he was a rebel, and he went over there, and he basically overthrew 
part um, of the, the emperor. government there. Now, yeah. who is this on on the center character? So then? this, there's another DJ that comes on before me, and this was his um, his guest, who is a, a musician. Okay. Now, um, how did you come up with the name Sunaker FM? What is so Sunaker means our house. Okay. And um, so that's it's the radio station. What we're trying to do is we're trying to bridge the gap between Africa and African Americans here, and really all Americans and, and, and really create a show that has a global appeal. Right. But we really want to give a voice to, to Africans and we want to educate African Americans about our ancestry. So my, my show is really targeted on, um, I'm starting a segment called P.S. I Love You, which is problem solving. That's what P.S. is an acronym for. Um, and the I Love You part is just that, you know, it takes love to get through things. Right. So what I'm looking at is I'm looking at challenges that we that you know Africans face that we also face um, in in our African American communities, and looking really at the people that are coming up with solutions because we can talk about the problems all day, but it's the solutions that we really should be focusing on and the vision for what we want for the future. Be part of the action. Now you said briefly you also wanted to mention your sister. Or yes. So my sister Amanda, who's also an artist, is right. starting her clothing line. She's working with some of the top designers. Um, Beyonce's uh, designers has been mentoring her. Um, so her name is Amanda Simmons, and her clothing line is Amade. Um, if you you can you can find Amanda Simmons on um, uh, her Instagram. Is or your Facebook page. I'm my sure Facebook you can page. Link to her we'll on have links. Facebook. She's got amazing swimsuit designs coming out soon. Now, here's your IMDb page that when you get there, make sure you go like Sandy's page and all the pages we're about to show you. Here's your... Now, will you take people who are not normally people you know to be on your Twitter page or on your Facebook you know page at Sandy? I take everybody. You take everybody? I'm so bad at this whole social media. I'm trying to get better. That's okay. You'll get better. I'm, I'm, I'm getting the Facebook thing down. There's Seneca FM. So now Seneca people FM. can actually go to the site and start to like it. Yeah. And this is your YouTube channel. So this, yeah, I have you know I have a couple YouTube channels. You know. This is one of your charities. You're helping out the LA Green Grounds, which yeah. supports clean food. And yeah. uh, if you stop by my site, you can uh, see shows we've done, as well as the live video ink show. If you click on the channel pages, you'll find the other interviews we've done with Sandy. There's Facebook. Make sure you like the pages when they get there, and I'm like you. I will friend you if you ask. Yeah, and go to my Facebook, because that's where you'll always find me, and Sandy I'm, Simmons. Exactly. A oh, good place. I forgot yes. about my Maxim shoot coming out January. I'm going to be in Maxim, folks. Check it out. Really? Yeah. Congratulations in 2014. 2014. Thank you for watching Actors E Chat and our special guest today, Sandy Simmons. And uh, to all the people who have been joining us in the chat room on Actors E Chat, we're here Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific time. We've surpassed 10 million viewers like you, uh, 5 million viewers. 10 was my wishful thinking. That would be <laughs> next year. And if you want to see all the shows, go to the Actors Entertainment dot com website put in the talent's name like sandy's name today in the in the box and it'll bring up the show she's on and you can watch it from now until who knows when actors entertainment is also on imdb the internet movie database where you can find one thousand of our guests who have been on the show before and please follow actors entertainment on twitter at actors entertainment thank and you. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. Oh, yeah. thank you. And uh, join us on the fan page on uh, Facebook at Actors Entertainment Fan Page. And here's the telly that Actors Reporter won with Now <gasps> Entertainment and, and, and Now Entertainment Great. and Now Media. Wow. This nice. is the telly, yes. And thank you for joining us on today's show. And we'll be back again soon on Actors eChat. Have a great day. Thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Oh, this camera. <laughs> What's that? Actors Eat Chat Show? Happens to be my favorite. In the morning, I want nothing but a cup of coffee, a bottle of Kahlua, six naked girl. Wait, no, that's not right. Actors Eat Chat Show. Gosh, hey, big Hollywood starlet that just happens to be walking by. Yes? I'm not from around here, but I want to be an actress just like you. What do I need to know? <gasps> Kid, let me tell you. Whether you're a seasoned pro or a naive newbie like you, there's one thing you need to know to get my first job.
I lived in a slum, beat out 50 other girls to play a drunk bum. I cried. My first agent charged me 30%, Thanks. working three jobs, and I couldn't pay rent. But I'm an actor. She's an actor. A shark nod my leg on a B film in Sydney to pay for the stitches. I sold my left kidney. I finally made a union. Their rules were complex. Their piles of paperwork fogged up my specs. But I'm an actor. She's an actor. I'm an actor. Well, that's rather disturbing. But what's the one thing I need to know? Don't listen to the critics. Don't follow all the tabs. Forget that sleazy photog and the agent that's got cramps. Go to Actors Reporter. Actors Reporter. Actors Learn the tricks and the secrets without all the sweat. An info packed one stop shop. It's free and on the Reporter.com. Say, how can they help her? Career cues, union news, makeup woes, advice from pros, insurance tips, choosing scripts, everything at your fingertips. Actors Reporter. Actors Reporter. Actors I just got a call back. Gruber. Thanks for joining us on Actor Z Live Chat Show. I'm just one of your Actor Z hosts, but as you can see, I'm also the Actor Z Live video editor, which means that I'm here even when you don't see me. Actor Z is here to chat with you Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, or Hollywood Time, as I like to call it. Our guests include actors, directors, producers, writers, singers, comics, and others that are all in the entertainment industry. You can see previous shows at www.actorsentertainment.com and be sure to check out our guest index to find your favorite celebrities. See you next time. I'm working.